Keeping banker's hours, Mr. Lavery. My time is my own. Besides, I work late at the club. So I understand. The answer is no. The answer to what? You have a look in your face I recognize only too well. You're about to ask the impossible. And the answer is no. You can't say no to Mr. B and what he wants. I can't. If you do, you're a dead man. When the choice of living or dying depends on saying yes, it does simplify matters, doesn't it? Come on, Duke, you love life, especially in such plush surroundings. Don't deny it. I won't. To business, then? To business. Good. Mr. B is bringing in more cash from Monte Carlo, which creates a crisis for the operation. What to do with the extra money you'll be skimming? Well, that's it. I take it you would like me to launder this extra money through Port Charles? Yes. You will handle the increase. Things are tight here, Damon. I don't think we can launder that much money. Well, Tessie's arriving tomorrow with the cash. Come on, man. Tomorrow is much too soon. I'm still in charge of this operation in Port Charles, and I'm telling you that it is impossible. When you're telling me, you're telling Mr. B, and you know it's of no use to argue the point with him. Is Tessie en route? Yes. Well, this isn't an argument, but I would like you to point out to Mr. B that Tessie is becoming a danger to this operation. We're aware of that. We're going to be making some changes which will allow you to handle the increased volume of money. What changes? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I need your signature on this before the banks close. What else? Um, there's a few reports that really need your attention right away. Well, this looks like a good opportunity for me to make a couple of phone calls. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's quite all right. First things first. I'll see you later, Duke. I held off coming in here as long as I could. No, I told you to come in if it was important. Let me see what you want me to sign here. <clears throat> um, also, I'd like to make a deposit of this money. I'm sure you don't want this much cash on hand. No, I certainly don't. Let me see what date it is. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned the date. Why? Because Robin's going to be coming back from Australia in a couple of days. Well, that should make Anna Devane a very happy woman. Yeah. I just hope. What do you hope? Oh, no, it's not. It's a problem I shouldn't really concern you with. Go on, I can handle it. Well, Frisco and I are just crazy about Robin. I just hope that when she comes back that we can be friends with Anna again. Anna, I told you about the first time I was approached about the poker game, right? Yes. And we decided that they invited a rookie cop to play cards for a reason. That I thought I would be set up to win a lot of money. Yes. Now, didn't we all feel that this was a link to the crime on the waterfront? You disobeyed orders, Frisco. You were told to report back to us if you were contacted about another poker game. We were going to assign a professional detective to take care of it. Your duty was to guard the station house. Well, that was just a punishment. I beg you. And besides, I got Eric to cover my post while I was gone. Yes, you got Eric to take your duty. Right. Well, you thought you had the authority to reassign cops. I felt it was an emergency. So you took things into your own hands. Well, there wasn't time. Now, this is a major link to my investigation. Your investigation? And it's right in the palm of my hands. Let me just correct you here, Frisco. This is not your investigation. This is not a one-man or a one-woman operation. You keep trying to go solo, Frisco. How many times do we have to drum it out of your head? How many times did I tell you at the academy? Police work is teamwork. It is teamwork. absolutely essential. Right. I think we've discussed this long enough. You have a three-week suspension without pay. A suspension? Yes. Without pay? Yes. All right, Joe, I think he's got it. Turn in your badge and your gun. You disobeyed orders, Frisco. You're dismissed. 